Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to this review of album number six by Las Vegas rock band The Killers. This one is entitled Imploding the Mirage, the follow up to 2017's Wonderful Wonderful. So The Killers are one of the most commercially acclaimed rock, rock acts of this millennium, but their status as such sort of rides on the horns of what may, some may categorize as 15 minutes of fame. Their 2004 debut, Hot Fuss, contains what remains their most commercially successful work, and over the past 15 years, they have sort of slowly devolved into gimmick status. Now, that's not inherently a bad thing. I feel like songs like The Man from their last album actually succeed at trying to be gimmicky and tongue-in-cheek on purpose, which makes that track in particular a lot more fun. I love that song. <laughs> <clears throat> the band truly shines, however, when they actually vie for the sort of bombasted pageantry their music leads you to believe that they're going for. They've always been students of Springsteen and New Wave, one foot seemingly locked in each camp, but on this album, they try to claim a healthy mix of both simultaneously, and the result is arguably their best album yet. My Own Soul's Warning opens this album with a bevy of ominous synths and noises and Brandon Flowers' nominally melancholic delivery as some subtle glassy guitars begin to erupt. Graceful glistening keys pave the way for a glowing, a bullying composition in the band's trademark original presentation. Let's face it, no one sounds like these guys. Brandon makes the religious euphemisms literal, trading lyrics for shaping his life after God's values with the sinking feeling that trying to deviate from that culminates in some type of literal damnation. Even non-religious listeners might find these words haunting. Now let's talk about blowback for a second. Am I detecting country undertones? Bear with me here. There's like a bit of a twangy shimmer on the guitars, conjuring up country vibes and uh, vibes of like 80s rock, certainly a moniker that the killers have never really shied away from. Dying Breed seems like some sort of continuation of Hard Enough, which is a song from Brandon Flowers' solo album on that track. He watched from afar as the old guard lamented a sea change in the way love was defined. And on this track, he uses that analogy to document whatever disconnect might exist between him and his wife. Given the often flamboyant and ambisexual nature of the band's music, this isn't a surprising uh, direction to go in at all. Caution spins the tale of a woman in the band's Las Vegas home, punctuated by Brandon's own enduring desire to transcend his hometown and move on to greener pastures. We're even treated to a great guitar solo from none other than Lindsey Buckingham. Even in the midst of a somewhat more serious album, we still get the kind of event and element of bombast that is the bedrock of any Killers album. Those synth lace keys are also a joy to listen to. Fire and Bone is unmistakably a product of the band's self-ascribed lessons in Springsteen. Those funky bass lines oscillating from the band's established sound to reminders of, let's say, Talking Heads. When the Dreams Run Dry places attention solely on Brandon Flowers' vocals as he muses about the brevity of life and how time is seemingly stolen from us. But that doesn't sully the richness or the majesty of the chorus, which swells with all sorts of cellos and bombast and Brandon's roaring pipes. And then the title track closes this album as it seems to tie up any loose ends with references to previous songs on the album like Caution and some haunting cryptic, cryptic passages that I want you to decipher for yourself, but I will leave you with this highlight that stuck out to me. A bullet train will get you there fast but I won't guarantee a long last. As the album's finale progresses, the drums ring out with a certain level of zest, and the layered vocal chants add a further element of life and energy to the band's sound palette, and Imploding the Mirage closes on that note. So, this is still a Killers album. There is a certain uh, personality to it, and Brandon Flowers' voice is unmistakable, and his identity as a vocalist is unmistakable. Uh, if you're not already keen to this band's work, then... It might not be a proper introduction, and it may take some getting used to again, but if you've already uh, digested their music in great detail, then you will appreciate the original presentation, their trademark sound that is impossible for anyone else to copy, really, without at least sounding like a copycat. <laughs> this this really is a one-of-a-kind rock act, despite uh, sort of dissipating in commercial success over the last 15 years, certainly peaking with 2004's Hot Fuss. But if you can look past that, and focus more on the lyricism and the somewhat more serious appearance that they're going for, then you will find this is probably their best album to date. I have to give this a few more lessons before I find a song I really don't like. I, I, pretty, I have no complaints about this. Um, I don't know where it'll rank among my best, favorite albums of this year, but it's definitely in that upper echelon. This is a strong return to form for a band that was seemingly slowly fading into obscurity but has now reclaimed their place and their foothold in the rock uh scene so to speak 
and I'm going to give Imploding the Mirage a 4.5 out of 5. Let me know what you thought about this album in the comments below. Uh, top 10 killer songs coming in the future. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this review, please hit the like button, or leave a comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell to get notified the next time I upload. And until next time, thank you for watching, and take it easy.